Hello, Hello. Merhaba. Merhaba. Selam. Selam. We, are, yeah. <laughs> we are, as usual, so excited to be here on this platform. Uh, my husband and I uh, are always co-hosting, but he always graciously let me start always. So I'm so thankful he asked one time, I think, he's like, when am I going to sit at that chair? I said, whenever you want. But n not now. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So our ministry is um, health and fitness. We are here uh, to teach you how to take care of this body that holds the most precious thing, the Holy Spirit. And with that, with your body's strength and health and the, with the Holy Spirit, you can do God's work for a long time. So I always start with my main scripture, and then I always have a side scripture. Today, when I was actually running, I was listening to something, and this, strict, this scripture popped out. So I said, this is it. This is what I'm going to talk about. So a main scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Or do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. We got it. We are the church. We are the building. We are the temple. So we need to take care of this precious gift from God. But my side scripture, I love this. And I'm actually learning more like this by preparing to the show. Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. What do you think about my scripture? Well, you know, it's, it stands to be more than just a, a word. But I mean, th I think that I think the more we understand uh, fearfully and wonderfully made, that means that whatever you want to call him, whether it's God or creator or whatever the case might be, you have to recognize that there's someone who created you. If he thinks that way about you, then... And if you don't think that way about yourself, it's not because of what he has done. It's what you have done with the creation that he's given you. So that's how he feels, and that's what God thinks about us. So we should also return that same favor by how we take care of the vessel that he's given us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, you, you know, people read the Bible for spiritual reasons. People read the Bible to learn what God wants from them. People read the Bible. I believe that the Bible is the owner's manual. Well, they, you know what they say. They said it's uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. Wow, that is good. <laughs> did you I just, did, it just came up? Huh? You know, <laughs> just, no, I'm just kidding, no. That <laughs> is know, really great. No, actually, I heard, I've been, I heard it years ago, many years ago, basic instructions before leaving earth. When I turned, I said, Be, I, oh my God, that is true. I mean, because that's what it is. Uh, everything that goes on around us is actually planning for our departure, which is a great thing when you think about it. But uh, thank God for life today because I'm not ready to go anywhere. You know, yeah, yeah, we have things to do. <laughs> we have things to do. But um, I look at it as an owner's mm. manual. Mm. He created us, mm. and he gave us the Bible. And with that, you know, it is, uh, it teaches us life, how we are supposed to uh, live our daily life, what we are supposed to do on earth. But it, the Bible also talks a whole lot about our physical condition, what we are supposed to eat, what we're not supposed to eat, and how we're supposed to take care of each other and our body, if you pay attention. Um, I have, I... <laughs> It does. Sorry. It, it gives I, I, you... I wasn't laughing about that, honey. You just, 
I was. I'm when, excited. No, no, no. You said a whole lot. You know? whole, I, I mean, you've been saying that for like, that's so cute when it comes out. It just. It is a yeah. whole lot of information. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it cha uh, God changed our way of eating three times in the Bible. Mm, three times. I don't know, people, you know, you, you can skip that. It, you, you won't see it. Maybe you read it really quickly. Uh, in the garden, our eating was different. When we got kicked out of the garden, it, was, it changed mm -hmm. and it was added more. Mm -hmm. And after Noah, after the flood, uh, animal products were introduced mm -hmm. to our diet. So there are always purposes. And, you know, I'm the kind of person that I would love to research and I would love to really understand why. Mm -hmm. So I really researched Leviticus, and I said, why, why, why? And do you know that? And right now in modern science, that's how it is, what God told us many, many thousands of years ago. So we have to take care of our body, and, um, and you have to know that this body is actually perfect. Yeah, it is perfect, and also its functionality is too. So right. if I may. Please. I'm going to give you guys a secret. Uh-oh. It's not, it's not the secret like in the book, but it's a secret. It's a secret to how to control your weight and your health. Because the way the body was created, it has survival mechanisms attached to it. Uh, if, in fact, you don't feed it enough, it has to survive, so it eats up the muscle. Right. Uh, if you eat less, it's the same way, okay? No matter what you do. If you... Uh, exercise it incorrectly, you're going to either get injured or you're going to lose your symmetry or, or your aesthetics. And then you have to bring them back. So the body you have to learn to respect. Now here's the problem. The problem is that you have the, your brain here and your body's here when it's supposed to be brain and body like this working as one unit. Okay? The hard part about us is that we think too much but we don't see the reality of what's actually going on. Because we're too smart here, <laughs> and we choose to be ignorant here, okay? Now, what happens is the more we listen to this here, this actually, the voice in this becomes louder in the form of what is called disease. Disease and injury. And then it begins to malfunction, and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Take it like this, for example, on an average, and this is um, uh, approximately, the body needs approximately a minimum of 1,200 to a maximum of 2,500 calories, give or take, in order to just survive. Think about that. Survive. This is not exercise. This is not swimming, hiking, whatever you guys do out there. This is just to survive. Because when you're just doing nothing, and you, they call it sedentary, when you're doing nothing, you're actually sitting at home. Your body has to regulate your core temperature, has to keep it at 98.6, or what is it, 27? No, 36. 36 degrees, yeah. I've, I've been away. I used to say, yeah. Exactly. Your body has to maintain that all day. Also, you have to keep your eyes lubricated, so you have to blink, 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 blink. Also, the saliva is in your mouth, so you have to it's used to break down food when you chew it and everything and to ensure proper digestion. The trillions of cells in your body needs water. Oh, my God, there's so many things that water is needed for and that these calories are used. So by the time you go to the gym, you're probably, if you burn 500 to 1,000 calories, and then you just eat a salad. So you got to understand that if you're not taking care of it, see, even though you're eating good, you can still be headed toward disease. So hopefully... During our time with you, we are able to share with you and help you along the way. And I think, sweetie, you got something else you want to talk about too, don't you? Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. I wanted to give a little information. About how donuts or something? No, like not no, donuts. <laughs> oh, wait, I just had a brain for it. I'm sorry. Our body, uh, <laughs> like it says, I am uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. Our body is really an amazing, an amazing machine that knows what to do how to do it, and when to do it. Mm -hmm. If we let it, if we let the body to, to do it. Let, for, example, for example, you have a cut. You just clean it and you leave it. 
it will heal itself. So the only thing we are supposed to do to let the body do its work and also give the ingredients to do its work, which comes in food, water, sleep, and activity exercise, I, I would call it activities, right? But the body internally has a clock that it's, it works really silently, but it's extremely important. Uh, you, you can say, I'm a morning person, I'm a night person, there's no really such a thing. Everybody's actually a morning person, mm -hmm. but we can get used to become a night person. So that doesn't mean it's good for you. It's just the body can also get used to bad. Mm -hmm. So the body has an internal clock. Let me tell you it, what it is. It's three parts from 4 a.m. to 12 noon is detox time and uh, the, what was the word? I, I tried to learn that. In, the, intermediate? No, defecation. No. Oh, oh, defecation. defecation. <laughs> Woo! That's a it girl. Is, that's I a word you, that I had to learn. Thank I'm so goodness. Sorry. Hey, you, that, I <laughs> thought you were ready to say something else, girl. No, defecation. Oh, thank you. Detox. <laughs> Then the body is getting rid of the toxins. That's just the way it is. You want it or not, that's the, how the body works. So, so, that's so defecation is? Going poo-poo. There we go. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's for those who don't understand. It's poo-poo. That's the word for the day. Poo -poo. Okay, that's, that's the word for the day. So when you wake up in the morning, if you notice, you have like an, a, some kind of like your tongue is like, dries that kind of has a weird taste to it because the body is actually detoxing that's when we use the bathroom and we have a breath that it's really not that attractive so that that's actually see the words coming no, out of somebody's exactly. mouth exactly hey good morning how are you <laughs> wow i see those words man why don't you <laughs> okay <laughs> so 4 a.m. to 12 noon is detox time so the best thing to do in the morning until 12 noon is eating foods that doesn't require too much digestion because digestion is a huge thing for the body automatically it's going to kind of intervene with the, the detoxing of the body so between so for example if you ate fruits in the morning for example it will require no digestion. You're still having calories, you're still having vitamins and minerals, but no required digestion, so automatically uh, that's a great type of food that to eat. From 12 noon to 8 p.m. is taking in. Mm -hmm. uh, taking in the food, getting all the ingredients for the body and eating all your cooked meals, regular meals, uh, to take it in. Now, from 8 p.m., of course, these hours play a little bit, but from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. is the assimilation, the utilization, the repair process. So actually, when you do go to sleep, the body is fully active and awake. Mm -hmm. It's actually repairing itself in deep sleep. So these are the times, so that's why uh, early mornings are extremely important and also your sleep time is very important yeah, and your food time is very important. So if you go by this hours, just try it for a few days for me, just for me, just try it and you will see you will feel light, more energetic because the body is not doing two, three times at the same time. And your internal organs is going to work better. It's going to cleanse better. And actually, you will sleep better. But I also found, I, I found another scripture about morning and nighttime. Because morning, you're supposed to wake up early. And evening, you're supposed to go to sleep around 9, 9.30, latest at 10 p.m. So, you know, for God, actually, mornings early mornings are extremely important. That's when you are more alert and empty, empty, nothing happening in the body to hear the God better.
So I have a scripture. I have another one, honey. Aren't you proud of me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. That mean early in the morning? Early in the morning. And is it quick? No, early in oh, the morning. Okay. Oh, well, I have a lot of scriptures with that, but I just found this because I really love the love this scripture and it's short and I can memorize it. So, uh, what do you think about the subject? And uh, don't you have something else to show us? <laughs> I feel like a guest. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, so that means when we finish, I can go home. Yes, okay, we can go right. home. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, everything you said was good, honey. But you know, it's uh, adding to that is. Uh, and not taking anything away from that, I can't really express how important it is to be that example. Yes. Um, I was at a meeting today, and uh, I was telling some uh, future uh, fitness coaches how important it was for them, if you want to be successful in this business, you have to be the sacrifice for your success. And if you're not willing to sacrifice yourself, then you can't really truly be successful in the business. You're just another salesperson. And I'm convicted in my heart that everything that I talk about, I have to know what it is for me. Uh, and, and the interesting thing about the Holy Spirit is it gives me all kind of angles on how the body moves in relation to what Karen was talking about when, it's, when she's talking about your, your mental attitude, your mental attitude on how you view your life that God has so graciously given to you determines your aptitude. In other words, how high you're going to go or your altitude. Yeah. So the thing is, is that when you're looking at change and if you look at yourself and you say, you know what, I need to change, you have to really be honest and you have to understand the word means change. It means change. Or in a more direct sense, it's called repentance. Repentance has been used to relate itself to if I do something uh, wrong against God or if I sin. But also you've got to understand gluttony. Okay, Gluttony uh, deals with a lot of like overeating overeating, things like that. It's not to say that that's a sin. But what I'm saying to you, I want to bring you, kind of reel you in a little bit. It's what I'm doing, reel you in. And think that when you want to change your life, if you're truly repentant of the way it was to get you there, then repentance means change. Turn away from. Now, sometimes you can turn away from things immediately, and sometimes you got to really work on them, Okay. So you have to take that word. Don't be afraid of that word, but be real to yourself so that what Karen is, is sharing with you is that your mental be changed or transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the first concern, one of the first and biggest concerns that God wants us to, to really focus on is how we think. Stop being salespeople. Be real about life and be real about yourself. Truly, you'll find the grace of God is more powerful than you can ever imagine when you lay your life on the altar and take up your cross like that. Yeah. I have to go back mm. to something you said. What? Gluttony. 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 Did I say that? You, you, yes, you did use that word. Now, gluttony. Is that when I eat a whole pack of cookies? That's right. No. 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 These are gluten-free. No, I'm just no. <laughs> <laughs> So, gluttony. <laughs> yeah. If we really look at it, isn't mm. it a sin? In the Bible, gluttony? No, I don't see it in it. Just, just, but the, the scripture does say, okay, when okay, we talk okay. about, because we're talking about God and it's a very serious thing. Right, uh, I, I just want to. It says, uh, love not the world. Right. Neither the things that are in the world. Okay. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Okay. Okay, now. When you talk about gluttony, it doesn't actually say specifically No, but lust of but the flesh, lust correct? Lust of the flesh is the thing because the flesh, see, we look at the lust of the flesh probably as something different. But when you're talking about uh, the lust of the flesh, because it talks about wine. Wine, drinking wine is not a sin either. However, oh, however, it says that 
it, who, whoever is deceived thereby is not wise because it's a mocker, raging, a strong drink raging. So, see, we have to be careful because the Bible also says that all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. In other words, they're not it's good, not good for, you. for you. Exactly. exactly. So, in that but wise, lust yes. Of, lust of the flesh is mm -hmm. a sin. I'm just asking well, you. Well, it's one of, it's only one three. Of the, it's where they come from. Lust it, of the ass, lust of the flesh, okay. and pride of life. So, automatically, from the side, mm -hmm. gluttony is about not being able to control your flesh exactly. and this could be overeating correct yeah. or well, being yeah. and the wages of that is death it's, it's i mean disease that's the payment. and yeah, you exactly. pay for it correct yeah. and then you're ineffective in your service to god and you and you and that's it's very difficult for me sometimes uh i think that we all should have that message exactly because um, all of us we supposed to represent the creator and, Correct. And, and usually, if you see somebody with a terrible-looking car, you say, man, don't that guy take care of the car? Can you just imagine what the world is looking, looking at when they p see people claiming the name of Christ? So, I mean, it's just that simple. And this is why so many people have, have a difficulty trusting in God because, you know, they, they're going to a building that they classify as a church when it's actually a meeting place but the church is the person. So when you, if you really believe that according to the scriptures, then there's a whole lot of terrible churches running around. Right, so we, we're actually looking... <laughs> there should look be section eight. That's a lot of, say, well, that's no, no reflection off of the other things, but I'm talking, I grew up in poverty. So, you know, if you are claiming the name of Christ, then that's not for you. That, that, that God wants you to have the best because, as you said... We're marvelously. Exactly. exactly. What? And if God thinks about us that way, how dare we not take care of this mm -hmm. body yeah. that is the temple? And, you know, when you were saying that this is what I thought about, you know, we have this beautiful, beautiful mega churches, mega buildings, stages, lights, clean comfortable seats, people that greets you, and it's beautiful. But when you look at the real church around walking around, mm -hmm. as you say, mm -hmm. those are like little tents. Like, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. And so you and have you, to take care of yourself. Yeah, but you, you know what, though, honey? Am I, am I did I say huh? it right? <laughs> Okay, it's all right. I got you. It's okay. You I got, got you. me right. I got you. <laughs> Okay. I think what's happening is, I think during this week, uh, guys, you know, we, we see a lot of people throughout the week. Uh, we, we deal with a lot of different experiences, um, even with ourselves. You know, we, we've been learning, uh, and it hurts to learn. I mean, for me, it hurts a lot. Uh, and God is always teaching me because I really want to learn. You know, I, I, I'm, I told my wife one day, I says, honey, above everything else, I was always a man before I... I was your husband. And, you know, God is teaching me to understand what that means because I didn't really know how to be a husband either. But with all the people that we've met, it has really taken us to this level that what you hear from us is our love for you. What you hear from us is our frustration and about people talking and not walking, you know. And, and, and it's sometimes our passion... Uh, can get so heightened that, you know, we're misunderstood, but we really honestly care. And uh, I think we just have a few minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you we, let me talk today. That, yes, that's right. But we, uh, I, we really passionate about this mm -hmm. because I am so saddened. I am saddened and yeah. it's heartbroken for me yeah. um, to see sad, sick, depressed, tired Christians running around claiming God's miracles that yeah. doesn't show in their life. Well, I think they, they get to where they, they can't do it anymore, so they pray to God to get them out of the trouble so they can get back into trouble. I think it's a human, I think it's human nature. Yeah, I think it's human nature. You know, if it's not your health, it's something else. So, you know, we're not saying... But, but I believe yeah. that, it, just to quickly, mm -hmm. that comes to my mind, uh, when uh, Jesus... Uh, did miracles. Well, he did miracles that was in a second, but he also, mo a lot of miracles that he did was he instructed exactly. the person 
to do something. Right. It didn't even make sense. It and sure you kind didn't. of go, what? Mud on my eye. I don't understand. Exactly. Yeah. And then he says, go do this, do this, do this, and you will be healed. Right. So there are instructions first, yeah. but there is also a, the person, no matter what, he did it. He right. had to do something well, yeah. so that God can work the miracle. So yeah, that's the, what yeah. comes to my mind. But the thing that, that really did that too, that, that I think it's important that, that you guys know, is that those, those individuals, they were at their wit's end and they trusted and believed. They did not question. They just did. They were there. They were there. So a broken and contrite spirit is what God is wanting from us. But before we go, I just want a, to give a, a special shout out, if I can. Of course, uh, oh, please. Uh, we have some, <laughs> some, some other projects going on, but I want to give a special shout out to a brother who's been uh, a blessing to us. And a lot of times we don't see eye to eye. We don't, may not understand each other, but a special shout out to uh, Kevin Watson and his family, to Elijah Polk, who's a dear friend of mine, uh, and uh, uh, Rumzelli, which is a young man that uh, his little baby actually uh, had an asthma attack. And God is really, his grace is covering him. And he's doing, I guess he's doing okay now, but I want to do a special shout out uh, to them. And I want to also thank you guys for giving us an opportunity to come into your home. And if you have any questions about exercise, write us and we will demonstrate them for you here or any training programs or food, right, honey? That's right. And soon what we will have available is, which it's, it's, it's not on print, uh, we have not released it, but we have it. And we've been keeping it for special occasions. And I believe this platform is a special occasion, which we will have our ebook yeah. of uh, A New You in Eight Weeks, yeah. which is in English. Yeah. And we will uh, talk about that and see how we will get it to you okay. so you can start yeah. a new you right. in Jesus. Meaning healthy. Yeah. Okay. No, I meant. <laughs> you know, I meant yeah. But with that, you know, we're gonna have to <laughs> say goodbye now. <laughs> hey, well, so, this is it, right? You know, uh, from us to you, we want to say we love you, and thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week.